Hello and thanks for joining us as part of France 24's week-long series on how the arts are fighting to survive in the coronavirus era. Today we're looking at what the film world looks like after a year of Covid. We're starting with a documentary about the origins of the pandemic that opened the Sundance Film Festival, which had to take place online. In the same breath was made by the award-winning Chinese-born New York-based filmmaker Nanfu Wang, who won the jury prize at the Sundance Film Festival two years ago for One Child Nation. Hello, Nanfu Wang. Now, in the same breath, open the virtual version of the Sundance Film Festival this year. But its story effectively began at Sundance last year, which opened on the same day as the COVID lockdown in Wuhan. Start by telling us how the film came about. My family lives 200 miles away from Wuhan. So it was a lot of questions that we had. How serious the virus was, how much information did we know, and also whether they will be safe or not. So eventually, I started looking um, on the internet to find out more information about the severity of the virus. And I noticed there is a huge discrepancy between what the government was telling people and what the reality was. So I started collecting the information and they were censored really quickly. So I archived a lot of them. And eventually, the more I saw, the more I realized um, the situation and how urgent it was. And because of the COVID restrictions, you made this film remotely, which is very different um, to how you worked in the past. How did it work? I um, made the film, most of, most of it is in this room that you are seeing, my office. We started with two or three people and um, we were able to get people into the hospital. We were able to get people to follow, um, to follow the ambulance. And then we also need people to go to um, people's homes. And a lot of those people who are working on this film, um, they are filmmakers. And eventually when the outbreak you know, reached the U.S., so we expanded the team and we had um, 10 cinematographers in the U.S. in different states. On the same day that the eight doctors were punished, Liu visited four of the hospitals where the punished doctors had been working. He was turned away from all of them. Many of the doctors at these hospitals must have known this new virus was spreading between people but they were afraid to say so for fear of punishment from the government. And one of the most interesting things about the film is you draw parallels between how the US and China have handled the health crisis. Can you tell us more about the similarities that you found? In both countries, you will see how um, cover-ups and um, disinformation and misinformation actually uh, came from the government. For, and sometimes with the highest leadership. We saw that in China, and we unfortunately are seeing that in the US as well. There are whistleblowers, there are people who are sounding an alarm, but um, they were silenced. And in the US is similar. Those doctors who asked important questions and um, who were warning the public, they also got silenced in the US. They were fired from their work, and we've interviewed several of them. Nanfu Wang, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck. Thank you. It sounds like a very important film to have been made at this time. Thank you. I'm joined now by the film producer Mark Missonnier and France 24's film critic Lisa Nesselson. Hello to both of you. Now, on the upside, the making of films and TV in France has continued despite COVID. 93 movies were made in 2020 compared to 103 in 2019. 64 TV series were made compared to 60 the year before, so not a big reduction. However, in 2020, cinemas were closed in France for 162 days. More than 65 million tickets were sold, which is less than a third of the number sold the previous year. Now, Lisa, um, aside from the fact that you haven't been in the studio for nearly a year because of COVID measures, um, so we're Skyping from down the road, and what have the past 12 months been like for the film world? 
Filmgoers in France bought lots of tickets to French films because there wasn't much competition from Hollywood style fare. It's been 14 years since more tickets were sold to French movies than American ones. Because they have small staffs, it can be argued that art houses coped better than the big chains. Keep in mind that 25% of all the screens in Europe are here in France, and roughly 40% of the 6,000 screens in France are designated as art houses. While streaming services have really taken off this past year, lots of French people are eager to return to real cinemas as steadily rising attendance in the gap between lockdowns from June 22nd to October 30th showed. Really good news for French productions is that the big US-based streaming platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and Disney Plus are now required by the European Union to pay their taxes locally and in the case of France, contribute a minimum of a quarter of their turnover toward local production. And Unifrance, the body that promotes French films beyond French borders, reported a surprisingly robust 2020 with deals to show hundreds of French films in the rest of the world. So what titles did you like out of the 125 films that were released over the past 12 months? Well, two of us, which uh, France submitted to the Oscars, is my favorite film of 2020. I really like Albert Dupontel's Adieu les cons, Bye Bye Morons, uh, a dark comedy about the unfairness of modern life, Un fils, a son, in which a successful Tunisian businessman, brilliantly played by Sami Bougia, runs into a problem he can't buy his way out of when his son needs an organ transplant, is wrenching, suspenseful, and complex. Love Affairs by writer-director Emmanuel Moret leads the César nominations with 13 noms. It's a bittersweet ensemble piece with knockout performances and very sprightly dialogue. And Josep, the animated portrait of a real-life Spanish artist whose life took him from the Spanish Civil War to internment in France to a romance with Frida Kahlo in Mexico to fame in New York. Let's take a look. 500 000 réfugiés cherchent un abri en France. Tu crois qu'ils méritaient ça Les fils de fer barbelés dressés pour laisser mourir de faim, de froid, de maladie, frappés, humiliés. Régalez-vous Il y avait bien quelques gestes. Tenez, c'est pour vous. Sembla que estiguis esperant algú amb moltes ganes, oi? Sí, la meva promesa. Allez, bougez-vous les fesses No passa gan if you want to go to a movie in a theater right now, according to Screen International, cinemas are open in China, Albania, Iraq, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. Now, Mark, you've been producing films for the past 25 years here in France, working regularly with the director, François Ozan. You've also produced um, two French films that were remade in English. Um, Anthony Zimmer by Jerome Salle, remade as The Tourist with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. Um, and Poor Elle, which was remade as The Next Three Days. Now, just a few weeks ago, you have launched a new filmmaking label. It's called Parasomnia Productions. We've seen this year of closed cinemas, of delayed, um, complicated film shoots and delayed film releases. Why did you want to do this now? Because uh, that's a project that has been launched before the pandemic, of course. And uh, it's also a sort of declaration of love for uh, going to theaters to see movies. And uh, it's the kind of movies, genre films, because it's a label dedicated to genre, uh, small budget films. It's a, it's a genre that I, I like very much. And um, I, I thought that the, the, the time was right. Uh, it's not because the cinemas are closed that we don't uh, believe anymore in, in cinema. And uh, so for, for this initiative, uh, I've been uh, associated with Sony Pictures and we both created this label uh, just to say that uh, we believe in, in, in cinema. Do you think there's going to be an outpouring of horror films because of the pandemic then? <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> uh, even if, uh, even, even if that we, we can see now that uh, reality sometimes go way beyond fiction, you know, and nobody could have imagined what we are going through. But I'm sure that this will, you know, challenge the imagination of, uh, of filmmakers, you know, for, for these films. And you've been keeping very positive amongst all of this. And you've been raising money for people behind the scenes um, in film. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, one year ago I created an association, you know, when we this pandemic just started, because a lot of people working for films um, were sort of uh, not helped by all the government's uh, measures that were taken. And so uh, I, I raised money uh, with, with others, you know, uh, to producers, uh, independent producers, independent distributors, we raised more than 220,000 euros that we give back to all these people working be behind the behind the scene, behind the stages. So uh, I think it's very important to show solidarity, you know, in these uh, hard times. And now we have a, a second session and we want to help uh, students in cinema. So we are raising more money now to help the students. Well, we are quite lucky here in France with the support that we're getting and filmmaking and film festivals continue, even if it is in different conditions, Lisa. Um, there have been a number of films made in lockdown. They don't seem to have had that brilliant reviews. And um, what films are you looking forward to this year? Well, some films were shot both in the U.S. and here in France under lockdown conditions. Sam Levinson's two-character drama Malcolm and Marie, starring Zendaya and John David Washington, may be the most talked about so far. And while that's daring and admirable and required lots of ingenuity, I'm not sure it compares to the making of Children of Paradise, one of the greatest films of all time, which was made during the Nazi occupation of France with 1,800 extras and key personnel, including genius set designer Alexander Troner, being Jewish. Uh, I'm very eager to see two films that were due to be at Cannes last May, Paul Verhoeven's Benedetta, about a feisty lesbian nun, and Leos Carax's entirely sung musical Annette, with music by the duo Sparks, starring Marion Cotillard and Adam Driver. And a new film from gifted iconoclast Quentin Dupieux is always cause for celebration. Uh, so I'm looking forward to his mandible, mandibles. And one of your favourite directors of all time makes a film a year in normal times and has been doing that for the past half a century. Covid, though, pre prevented him from shooting one last year, didn't it? Woody Allen would almost certainly have shot a film in France last year. His latest completed film to date, Rifkin's Festival, premiered last September in San Sebastian, Spain, where it's set. Uh, the story of an American couple who attend the world-class film festival there, created in 1953, I'm told it dips into some wonderful fantasy sequences that tip their hat to the history of movies. Okay, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to leave you with Rifkin's Festival. Um, thank you also to the film producer, Mark Missonnier. Good luck with your new production company. Thanks. Come back and chat to us about the films you make afterwards. I'll, I will. We'll look forward to it. That brings us to the end of the show about the film industry during COVID. It's part of our Culture versus COVID series that's on all week on France 24. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I had to accompany my wife to the San Sebastian Film Festival. She did the press for them. Look, yes, for the... Oh my God, I love his look. He is so chic. I only went because I couldn't shake the suspicion that she had a little crush on this movie director. <laughs> well, we put in quite a day today, huh? You did. You were unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I wasn't a little uncomfortable about Sue spending all day with Philippe. I ran into Sue this morning. At first, I thought I was interrupting something until I realized it was your wife. <laughs> Since coming here, my mind started playing tricks on me.